Well, hello again. This is Brian Copeland talking. Welcome to another edition of Copeland's Corner. If all goes well, we'll be joined soon by uh, three distinguished comics, and we will talk about some of the news of the week. Uh, we had the last couple of weeks off because I have had that bug that's going around. Oh, I shouldn't say that bug because apparently my doctor says there are like 100 viruses that are going around right now, literally 100 viruses. And uh, some make you cough, some stuff you up your nose, some, you know, do both. Uh, and there's literally nothing they can do. There's literally nothing they can do. They have to run their course. And uh, the one I had where I couldn't breathe out of my nose. I've, this is the first day I breathed out of my nose in two weeks. And the uh, doctor said that they, uh, they, they are lasting one to three weeks. So a lot going around, a lot going around. So, you know, may, maybe masks should come back in style. You know, we've all relaxed and taken our masks off. You know, I know I wore mine everywhere and didn't get sick for a long time. As soon as I take the mask off, go places. You know, this is like the third thing I've had in the last six, six months. So anyway, uh, let's see. We've got um, the two candidates for the Democrats and uh, for the Republicans for the 2024 election. Joe Biden clinched the nomination and uh, Trump clinched the nomination. So we get a replay of 2020. And got to tell you, I'm just shaking my head because I just know that this is going to be a shit show. You know, it just it just is. Um, and I will tell you, I'll be straight up honest with you. As partisan as this is, I'm just going straight up to say it. You know, that Donald Trump being president again scares the hell out of me. Scares the hell out of me. And I can't believe that so many people in this country right now have like amnesia uh, as to what we went through between 2017 and 2021 with this guy. And, you know, all of the cruelty and the horrible things, that, you know, separating uh, children from their parents at the at the uh, U.S.-Mexico border. And here we are in 2024. And a lot of those kids have still not been reunited with their parents because nobody kept track of where they were placing them. Uh, and of course, you know, the COVID epidemic, I'm sorry, you know, if, if Trump were not the president or if he had been as president acted presidential and gave uh, the American people uh, all of the information as he received it, you know, from, uh, from uh, Deborah Burks and from Fauci, uh, there would be, uh, the estimate I saw was a hundred thousand people. Approximately 100,000 people died who didn't have to die because of misinformation that they were given or information that they were given uh, during uh, Trump's briefings that um, had things deleted that the administration thought would make them look bad. You know, if he had encouraged masking, if he had encouraged people to take the vaccine instead of being anti-vaxxers, you know, how many people will still be walking around today? You know, who, who <laughs> it, it, it just boggles the mind. Uh, and then after he loses the election, he riles up a crowd to attack the U.S. Capitol, to attack the Capitol in Washington. And, you know, have we forgotten this in this whole, you know, are you better off today than you were four years ago? Yes, we all are. Of course we are. Four years ago in 2020, we were locked in our houses. You know, everything was shut down. We were locked in our houses. You know, so of course we're better off today. I mean, why is this even close? Yes, Joe Biden is old, but so is Trump. You know, and to be perfectly honest with you, I like the job that Biden has done, but I, I think it would have been nice if he had just been a caretaker president for one term and then stepped aside and let's, you know, it's time for, for new blood. And if it weren't for Trump's, you know, ego, uh, he would have done the same thing, but he didn't give a damn about the good of the Republican Party. He just doesn't. He never has. It's all about him. And when they say that democracy is on the ballot this November, you know, that's not hyperbole. It really is. You know, when you have a man who is an authoritarian, when you have a man who says, says out loud that he's going to be a dictator for a day if he's elected. Okay, first of all, does any dictator ever go, I'm just going to do it for a day. Now step aside. No, you know, I'll, I'll let democracy do what democracy does. Has anybody, any dictator ever done that in the history of the world? No, of course not. And among the first things he's going to do, he says, is to release all of the rioters from January 6th. I mean, this just scares the hell out of me. It really does. And they say that, you know, if this, in theory, this may be the last free election we have in this country. 
And again, I'm not being hyperbolic. You know, he didn't leave before. He's talked about suspending the Constitution. He didn't want to leave before when he lost. You think he's going to leave now? If, you know, when, when, his, when his second term is up and constitutionally he can't run again, you, you think he's, going to, he's just going to quietly walk away and thank everybody? You know, it's frightening. It's just frightening. And the antics that we're going to see over the course of the next several months, uh, I'm just, I'm exhausted already. You know, we were just recovering from 2020. So we will be uh, keeping an eye on this, of course, and we'll be over in the months to come. We'll be talking about the weekly or daily scandal or weekly or daily outrage um, as uh, as we get closer to the election. So uh, be sure to listen to us every single week here on Copeland's Corner or watch us uh, on the YouTube show. This is part of the podcast that we call Headliners on the Headlines. Joining us this week is Laura Mayer and Don Reed. Welcome, both of you. Thanks for coming back. Thanks hello, for hello. having me. So um, let's just jump right in. Um, we, Nothing's we, been happening in the news, though, lately. No, nothing, nothing at all. Let's see. So Trump has uh, clinched the nomination and Biden has clinched the nomination. And Shock. I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> I'm already exhausted. I'm just like already exhausted. You just started. You can't get exhausted yet. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is going to be such a shit show. I mean, it just yeah. is. I mean, you know that it is. You know that that Trump is going to say or do something every single day between now and November that reasonable people are going to find just outrageous and disgusting. And um, those who are in the cult, those who have drank the Kool Aid. Are, are, going to cheer him, are going to cheer him on. Yep. In fact, let's go ahead and start with um, with this. Um, OK, you know, the Katie Britt disaster. Did you I, I'm, I'm, sh- I'm sure that you both saw this by now. I just uh, watched it. I just watched it. Did you watch her just or did you watch it. the SNL one? Or did you watch? I saw both. Oh, my did, gosh. Did would, yeah. So, OK, so here's the thing, you know, she, uh, she is uh, is fundraising off yep. of the the off of uh, the the backlash. Um, yep. She as she sent out a fundraising email uh, this week that says that her heart is broken for all of the people she was speaking for because of the way that that she is being treated by the media and by the liberals, you know, and everything else, you know. And so here's the worst part of it is it's gonna work. Well, uh, that's it's going to work. You know, they do this because what the Republicans do, they do something, you know, you know, like what she did was outrageous, you know, to take a, a story of, of a woman who was trafficked as a child and completely lie about it and then use and use it for political purposes. Then when she gets caught, when she gets caught, rather than saying, yeah, OK, I'm sorry, that was the wrong thing to do. She doubles down and yeah. says she didn't do anything wrong. And not and only now she's she- a victim. She makes it, but that's class and GOP playbook to make yourself the victim. But the best part is it didn't even work completely with the GOP. I mean, she'll raise money because there are idiots out there. But um, did you see there was a clip going around? I think it was OAN, some really, really right wing network. And their anchors were watching this and they finished it. And for like more than a minute, they were silent. They were, ah, huh. Huh. They couldn't say anything. And it wasn't even about the lie. It was about maybe it wasn't such a good idea to put her in a kitchen. And there was something about I mean, it was somebody said it was like she was um, she was auditioning for the role of Reno Sweeney, but doing the dead Emily monologue from um, our town because she was smiling and crying at the same time. So, I mean, if her delivery had been better and it had, and the lie was just as bad, they would have bought it, but they were upset with her acting. <laughs> it was the, just... the issue I'm finding is the doubling down. I mean, what world are we living in when it's clearly established you lied or did some chess moves with the truth on a huge level where ever you can see, and then you stick down and then people back you up on that? Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's the most insane yeah. part for me, the doubling down with force and then getting full support from a, you know, a group of people. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, out of Trump's playbook. that's all fortunate. out of Trump's playbook. That's all out of Trump's playbook. 
uh, because, you know, he was taught by Roy Cohn, his mentor, you know, yeah. who worked with Joseph McCarthy, you know, yeah. the Red Hunter. And uh, you never apologize. You never admit that you were wrong. You right. just, you know, you, you doubled out. And, they, you know, they're doing the same thing with January 6th. You know, we all saw it. It's on right. video, but nope, nope. It was a peaceful, yeah. <laughs> it's about peaceful right. demonstration or just tourists at the Capitol. Well, what's interesting, though, with the Katie Britt thing, going back to that, the woman she talked about has now come out publicly and said, you've misrepresented me, you've misrepresented my story. It wasn't a cartel. It was just Mexican pimps who trafficked her. Mm -hmm. And how dare you use me? I don't want either party using me politically, but you used me and misrepresented me. And that, I mean, she can still present herself as a victim and claim that the media is, you know, being mean to her. But you kind of, you know, if you're going to tell a story about a person and you misrepresent them and they object, that's kind of hard to talk your way out of. No, that's that's crazy, but, but that's a crazy thing. What they'll do is say Biden got a hold of her and told her she needed to back up this orchestrated story. And also, on the other hand, that's an AI woman. She's not even real. You know, like Trump saying it's yeah, like Trump saying that the the video of him looking cognitively impaired is an AI fake. Yeah, that, well, that's what he, he said on, on True Social. I don't know if you oh, watched any of the yes. any hearings, any of the Robert Hur hearings, where the Democrats were showing um, the montages of of Trump yes. uh, misspeaking and and forgetting things and being incoherent. And uh, he, he ranted on True Social that it was all done with AI. <laughs> That's the, here's the problem. You know, how worried and concerned are you about AI in this election? I mean, because you the, it's so good it's in, in a lot of cases, you really can't tell. You really I didn't know that that. I, well, I'll tell you about the, 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 um, the, the picture going around of Trump. Have you seen the picture of Trump with all the African-Americans surrounding him? Yes. And his arm and arm with him? When I first saw it, I thought, no. Nah. No, th this isn't right. But it's good. You look at it, it's good. You know, you can't, I'm looking to try to see, you know, with a magnifying glass, and, you know, in you large know. on screen. Yeah, I go, it's got to be because Trump doesn't even know that many black people. Well, it's like you can't tell what's real and what's not. Like when I heard Jimmy Kimmel read that tweet, I thought, oh, they've got some good writers on staff. And <laughs> until you find out it was a real tweet from real. Trump at the Oscars. I mean, I am worried, but fortunately, I mean, it's insane, but some of the stuff that Trump is taking credit for, like claiming credit for getting rid of Roe versus Wade, saying he's going to cut Social Security. I mean, he's saying stuff and campaigning on stuff that is so distasteful to the majority of the American public that even with all the other craziness, I feel pretty reassured that they're going to say, wait a second, I don't want my Social Security cut. So, yeah, well, and they attack the AERP. I don't know oh yeah, it's the most evil organization. They, they, they attacked. They attacked the AARP at uh, what, what? What's the name of that of that conservative gathering? CPAC. That CPAC. Yeah, that they're yeah. like the most dangerous. The day, most dangerous. Yeah, we're all terror. All right, well, you guys, are you old enough to be an AARP? I am. I'm no, in I'm, it. I'm an AARP member. Yeah, we're horrible. We're plotting the overthrow of the country. I guess. Yeah. Don, you had something you were going to say? Sorry. Um, it was about the. Uh, the the brothers behind Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I know three of them, and they weren't there. <laughs> was that like one of those stock photos that they stuck him into? Because it almost looked like a photo from you know, like a photo frame photo, like those stock photos. I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now that I think about it, it looks like it could have been. It very well could have been. You know, so uh, it, it's it's just I'm just not never not that I'm ever really looking forward to a presidential campaign because they they do get nasty but it's it's just this is just so different it's just so different and you know I, I was talking at the, at the before you guys came on about this you know what kind of amnesia do we have in this country where we don't remember what it was like before why the hell is this even close right. you know but it it it's very close it's within a couple of points right now and that, but again fortunately the election is not right now so hopefully you know things there there will be some some separation but 4 well, years ago i was locked in my house i don't know about i don't know about everybody who's, who's saying well, aren't we better off now or weren't you, I, aren't you better off then rather yeah well fortunately it was reassuring your other thing you were saying but um, j jumping too far, but um, it, can the electoral college screw this thing up? Because yep. I know votes yep. are going to be by. Yep, I don't have any doubt about that. Particularly yep. with things like um, Kylie Jenner and some of the big rappers mm -hmm. making voting very, very cool. Mm -hmm. 
So I know those numbers are going to be Taylor mindful. Swift. Exactly. Yeah. But can the Electoral College still screw that yes. up? Yes. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Eight you know, years ago. You got to remember, he hasn't won the the the, uh, the popular vote um, either time he ran, the time right. he won or the time he lost. I mean, and I'm talking like, what was it? What was the number? Seven million or something? Seven million, I think. Seven was million. It, right? Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in, in 2020. And, and it was and, you know, three million in, in 2016. In 2016. So, you know, um, I, I think we need to get rid of the electoral. Oh, of course. But it'll, it'll never happen. No. It will never. I can tell you unequivocally, it will never happen because those those smaller red states are not. We have to. We would have to 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 amend the constitution, which means that two thirds of the Congress and two thirds of the of the of the uh, uh, the states have to go along. And those red those red states are not going to go along. They're just two thirds of the Congress can't agree on on what day of the week it is. So that's the. But the one thing I was starting to say that was a little reassuring was seeing how combative Biden was in the State of the Union speech. It was like the more they heckled him, the more he seemed to derive strength from it. And and just like with Trump with the Oscars, they are playing right into Democrats' strengths. And Biden looked like, I mean, the more the ruder they were, the the more he was smiling. That was really reassuring. And they are, you know, they they don't know what to do with the whole thing with now IVF is they you know, how do you reconcile IVF with fetal personhood? I mean, and they're fighting amongst themselves and and the the they're they're going to be down one more seat in Congress with Ken Buck. Yeah, Buck, I mean, just, Buck just bolted. Yeah, yeah, he just bolted. And well, it, you know, and I I don't blame him. I mean, and he's, they're not getting anything done. They're not getting anything done. He's complaining on the way out. He's not going gracefully, which is good. Or quietly. Yeah. Or, or quietly. Yeah. Um. You know, it's just as I said, it's it's just insane, and it and, and it just scares me. It scares me what what can happen because he's going to be war if he gets elected again. He's going to be way more dangerous than he was the first time because oh, at yeah. least the first time he had some people who had some uh, some <laughs> common sense among other things yeah. who who restrained him from his and held him back you know with his, and contained his worst impulses. But right. but he will uh, put loyalists in every single uh, appointment. There will be a, a loyalist in every single appointment that he makes. Somebody exactly. who will go along with him and go in lockstep. And that's what makes this so scary. Right. And he, but was, he, won't- and he was exponentially uh, shifting. He started wondering if he could do the loyalist chess move. He was wondering about it and he started doing it. But step by step, he'll come in full blast with that you know, playbook of like, mm-hmm. get the loyalists in immediately everywhere. Right. But look what he's doing to the Republican National Committee. There's going to be no money for any down ticket races. So even if he gets all of his loyalists, at least I think he's going to lose the House and the Senate because they've already fired anybody in the RNC or they're laying off anybody in the RNC who isn't a complete Trump loyalist. And Laura Trump has already said their only real priority is paying his legal bills. So I have a feeling they're going to bankrupt the RNC and they won't have any money for the down ticket candidates. No, they so. probably won't. They probably won't. And, and that's another thing I, I don't understand. Is, well, again, it's 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 all about being in a cult. Yeah. You know, why would you send why would you as a working class person? And that's a lot of his support comes from working class people, you know, people who are struggling, people who are, you know, uh, living month to month or week to week in some cases. Why would you take your hard earned money? And, and give it to a uh, to give it to a billionaire what, to pay his legal bills or or give it to a billionaire to help him run for office. He, he supposedly, you know, the first time he wasn't going to take any money. He's a billionaire. He says he can pay for it all himself. And it was a, that was like everything oh, else. Or most things was a lie, it was a flat but out. Why lie. they so, picked him to aspire to and not Mitt Romney or, you know, there's so many other Republicans whose policies I thoroughly disagreed with. It's like it was almost like they engineered the worst possible person in terms of his morals, his business, his articulateness. It's, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I think it, it's mind boggling why anybody could be a Republican anymore. Saw so a great quote today, uh, a great tweet today. Um, this is Liz Cheney, and she tweeted out today if your response to Trump's assault on our democracy is to lie, and cover up what he did, attack the brave men and women who came forward with the truth, and defend the criminals who violently assaulted the Capitol, you need to rethink whose side you're on. Hint, it's not America's. 
Mm-hmm. Now, I agree mm-hmm. with Liz Cheney about nothing, hey. nothing. And the way she's conducted herself, you know, uh, she's really one of the only profiles in courage that, that, that we had in Washington. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. And I agree with her on absolutely nothing. But I will tell you, I, I believe the woman has integrity. I look at her in an entirely different light now. Exactly. And and she has changed her mind on things. I mean, it, it took having a gay sister for her to come around on LGBTQ rights. But at least she was someone you could disagree with on policy, but could respect as at least being sane. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. The days, and, of, the days of agreeing to disagree are over. You oh, know, yeah. that, that was the whole thing is, you, you know, your your opponent, it was. And see, the thing is, this carries over into everything. Your opponent was not necessarily your enemy. That's no. the whole thing. Now, if you know, you could before you could agree to disagree about certain things. It's like, okay, I don't agree with you on this, but you know, yeah, you know, that's kind of how it is. I don't hold this against you personally. We just disagree about this issue, and that's fine. Now, is if you disagree, you are the enemy. If not only disagree, the enemy, you are Satan. I mean, you are yeah, I mean, these things. Like, if you are a member of the AARP. You are you are evil. And <laughs> no we are scientists in saying that we're saying they're nuts, but we're not saying they are coming from Satan. You know, it's like the halftime show was Satanist and the Oscar. Oh, what's the guy? John, how do you pronounce his name? The comedian who came out naked at the um, Oscars to present the costume Lucina? award. Lucina? Lucina. Oh, be still my beating heart. Um, you know that that was somehow Satan emasculating men. Did you see that one? It's like, no. first of all, that was the least emasculated man I've ever seen on national TV. <laughs> so, on live national TV. Yeah. Um, so today, the House voted 352 to 65. Talk about bipartisan. You know, wow. how, how, how much legislation do you see go through the House with a 352 to 65 vote? You know what they voted on? TikTok. Very good. Seriously, it was. They voted already. Three fifty-two to sixty-five to ban TikTok in the United States, and if the bill becomes law, what will happen is that unless the company that owns the, the Chinese company that owns TikTok divests itself within the next five months, unless they sell it to an American company, it is banned. It will be banned in the U.S. if it becomes law. So now it's got to go to the Senate. It's got to come. It's got to come to the Senate. How will, how do they ban it? Um, what they do is they make it illegal to uh, to have their uh, their app in any of the app stores, and illegal a violation of federal law for any of the hosting platforms to host TikTok. And so that's how they do it. And apparently, there are a bunch of countries that that have banned it. I wasn't aware until I started reading on this this oh, morning. Yeah. Australia, really? the EU, Britain, Canada, uh, uh, there Taiwan. There are several countries and the reason definitely being, Taiwan, definitely Taiwan. Uh, but the, the reason being is because the way that TikTok, the algorithm collects information on people to know, you know, what videos to show you can be used to uh, to influence that can be used as a, a propaganda tool or to influence Americans by knowing how Americans think based upon what they're putting on TikTok. You know, what kind of information TikTok's collecting. And like so, the other they, social media things aren't already doing that? I know. I hear you. You know, they don't uh, allow, like in China, they don't allow um, the algorithm to present most of the dumbed down stuff that America receives. In their feed, they're receiving things about education, uh, motivation, and things like that. But a lot of the other, uh, like sensual things, or goofy or people doing pranks, it doesn't even reach through. So really? the part of the design is to dumb down America. Mm-hmm. Keep watching dance videos while we're educating our, our youth. <laughs> wow. They don't need much help dumbing down America. <laughs> no, not at all. Not not these days. They don't. I'm not part of um, so, so it's passed overwhelmingly in the House uh, and the Republicans have gone against Trump on this. Because Trump tried to ban it himself unilaterally with an executive order in 2020. He tried to ban TikTok and then the court stopped him, said he couldn't said that he couldn't unilaterally do it. Uh, And that so he was for banning it until he had a billionaire investor, a billionaire investor to Mar-a-Lago. Now he's like, well, you know, he's backtracking going. It's it's only going to help Facebook. 
It's only going to help Facebook. So, you know, maybe there's, you know, there's some reasons. And, and out of the uh, the 65 who voted uh, voted no on this, um, one makes a real good point is that you're going to hurt uh, a lot of people whose livelihood depends on TikTok. Yeah. You know, these TikTok influencers who are making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year uh, based on TikTok are financially going to be hurt. And but, you're going to hurt parents who now ha suddenly have to come deal with all their whiny children with nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, they actually have to talk to them. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think that a lot of social evils are happening because kids are on their devices all the time. But I wouldn't want to have teenage kids right now who were suddenly cut off from TikTok. That would be really not mm -hmm. fun. Well, it's, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not it becomes law because Biden says that he'll sign it. If it gets to his desk, he'll sign it. But we don't know what's going to happen in the Senate because Chuck Schumer won't declare either way which side he's on and whether or not he'll even bring it up for a vote in the Senate. So <laughs> it, it, it could die there. It could. Yeah. Be, but if it's, if it's a threat to national security, how do you not? I mean, you, we're giving information to the Chinese, to communist China. How can we not? you know, uh, ban it. Yeah, so, uh, so we'll see. We will see. Um, so they're going to vote to ban it. But meanwhile, Trump, who probably owes billions of dollars to the Chinese and Ivanka has all their trademarks there. Somehow that's OK. I, no, there's a lot. There's, there's no so logic. Much. Uh, let's see what else in the news today. Um, the, uh, the Michigan school shooter, Ethan Crumbly, whose uh, mother was uh, convicted of involuntary manslaughter uh, Last month, I think it was mm -hmm. uh, by a Michigan court for uh, shooting that uh, that that uh, Ethan did in uh, school shooting in November of 2021, right uh, shortly after after uh, Thanksgiving, and he used a gun, a, a semi-automatic handgun that his father had given him as an early Christmas present, and so their parents were on trial because the the conventional wisdom is that they should have stopped him. They should have seen this was coming. They shouldn't have given this kid a gun, first of all. Second of all, he had mental health issues. And uh, there are messages that he sent to people and tweets that that, that he uh, apparently sent out saying that he has asked his parents to get him help. And his dad told him just to suck it up. Mm. He, didn't, he didn't need to see a therapist, didn't need to get help, just to suck it up. And on the day of the shooting, uh, his math teacher was looking at his homework and saw a drawing of somebody with a gun and uh, somebody with a gun and somebody who had been shot uh, on, on the math homework. So the school calls the parents in and the parents uh, don't do anything. Quite frankly, they, they, they don't take him out of school. They don't take him home. They don't tell the school that, they, that they he has access to a gun. No, no, they don't. So later on, he comes back and he kills four people. So the so the mother was was convicted, and the father today. Closing arguments are today. Today being Wednesday when we're recording this, and uh, the father is not testifying in his own defense. Uh, the mother did testify, and and uh, people analysts are saying that she did more herself more harm than good. So he's not going to testify. Uh, so the, the the question is, I guess I got two questions for you. Number one, do you think the parents should be held responsible for this? And number two. Um, Ethan, the shooter, who obviously had some serious mental health issues. You know, when you look at some of the stuff, this guy, this kid was was uh, some of the texts he was sending to his friends, you know, where he's he's talking about, uh, you know, shooting people. And if he had a, a, a gun, he'd shoot up to school and things like that. Uh, you know, he know he had serious mental health issues. He pled guilty and is doing life without parole. Does he belong in prison or does he belong in a psychiatric hospital? They got to begin the steps of uh, accountability with parents since it's happening so often. And since the repercussions are only hitting the shooter, the assailant, perhaps even a small percentage can be dipped down. If people know you as a parent will be held responsible, you yeah. can be held responsible, even if that hits 7%. Maybe if it doesn't make the 50 percentile or 60 percent dent, even 7 percent, 10 percent is some live saved. So I say with the numbers, 1 percent. So I definitely agree that it's, a you know, you got to be super careful with assigning all blame to parents. But in this and was this the case? I'm mixing up my school shooters, which is a common thing in this country. But yeah, isn't that right. also the one where the mother was too busy 
having an affair. Yep. And she was, yep. yep. But I mean, that any parent buys a gun for kids. I mean, yeah, exactly. Which parent having an affair with, with which school shooter parent? I mean, it's, um, but this is also, I mean, the same people who say everybody has a right to a gun are also the ones I just saw, was it someplace in the South, a father just got the courts, or maybe Texas, to approve that birth control could not be given without parental permission because he swore he would keep his daughters from having any access to contraception until they were 18 mm -hmm. so that they wouldn't have sex. Yeah, right. But the oh, courts yeah, declared, yeah, that everywhere. always works great. <laughs> um, but that the courts, at least in Texas, I think it was declared that no minor can have access to birth control without parental permission. So if they can't have birth control, they all, I mean, if they're too immature for birth control, they're too immature for guns. And I think, and, it, and to answer your second question about whether this kid needs mental health, they say, yes, I, uh, I definitely believe he should be getting mental health services. As opposed to prison. As, 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 opposed, as opposed to prison. And I, I'll tell you, I mean, I think he should be held accountable. However, you know, the, the, I guess that the, the the bar is whether or not he knew the difference between right and wrong. You know, if you are, if you don't know the difference between right and wrong and you can't tell that what you're doing, you're so ill that you can't tell that what you're doing is wrong. Generally, you know, you are not guilty by reason of insanity, but he pled guilty. Right. And he didn't plead guilty by reason of insanity. I think there is an in between no, area. Guilty. Right. No, I mean, but I mean, he didn't plead insane. He didn't plead. No, insane no, he didn't. Plead, no, he just came in and but there's a for gray area in between. And this kid is a minor 15. and not fully 15. I mean, not even like on no, the, the verge of time of the shooting. Yeah. Um, but again, and the, <laughs> it's just mind boggling that these parents you know, you have to get a supposedly get a license to get a gun. You have to get a license to drive a car. You don't have to get a license to procreate. And there are so many horrible parents making horrible decisions, which is bad enough on their own kids. But when you give that kid a weapon that he can go kill other kids with, then those parents are responsible, at least Don? in part. Yeah, it's, it's a big stretch. It's a big stretch. But I uh, have uh, family members over time who have dealt with bipolar issues, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I, I I think this is a big stretch, but I think it should be a kind of a, a gap person. By that I mean perhaps if the teacher sees violent writings on math homework, then they can turn that into a on-site or community therapist, and that therapist can take action with authorities over the parents to temporarily put that child in custody. Right. And then you're talking, about, you're talking there. about arresting somebody, arresting, arresting a kid for something he drew. That's or, what you're or drawing about. violent pictures and having any kind of a record of commenting to those. Oh, I'll shoot this place up one day and drawings should be grounds for at least an evaluation. Yeah. Without mm -hmm. parents consent. I, I agree with that. But I know my that. son never did anything like that. I was going to ask you guys, because we're all we're all parents here with with our, our kids are all grown. But when you when they were children, when they were teenagers, did you know what was going on in their in their rooms? Because I looked at like, you know, when you read about Columbine and how how those those kids were building like pipe bombs and stuff in their bedrooms and the parents had no idea. I I don't think um, my kid would have been able to build a pipe like bomb. Without no. me knowing. However, you know, it's like you, I, my whole thing about going in their rooms was as long as you kept their rooms clean, as long as they weren't giving me any trouble otherwise or any reason to otherwise, I would never go in and go do their things. And I never I never had to. No, but they I mean, same thing. My kids knew if I had any. And of course, my kids were so nerdy and square that, you know, nobody would have sold them drugs even if they wanted to buy them. Um, but I but they knew if they. You know, even if it was things like they were supposed to be doing homework and I thought they were, you know, playing on their Nintendo Game Boys or something because we didn't even have computers in their rooms. They knew they would lose the right to privacy. Right. And, you know, for these, I mean, besides they're cooking up bombs, you think you would smell something worse than the normal teenage body odor coming out of their rooms? <laughs> you would think. The, the brooding dramatic energy would be a red flag for me. Yeah. The dead silence, uh, I'm done with dinner and going straight to their room and, yeah. and including themselves would be a major red flag for me. Uh, and with all the mental health issues and all the shootings 
any parent that's too busy bunking the neighbor to notice their kid is in some kind of um, unstable state needs some time themselves. Or, or when yeah. the kid when the kid tells you, "I need help," right? And instead of getting them help, you get him a gun and tell him to suck it up. And, I mean, that just makes no Merry sense. Christmas. Give him yeah. a gun and say Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, suck it up. Yeah, exactly. Merry Christmas. Uh. I, love old, I listen to old radio. I, I'm a big fan of, of old time radio. And there is an episode of Dragnet from 1949, a very famous episode called um, 22 Rifle for Christmas. And it's, and it's about a, a fall. And it's, you know, those stories on Dragnet were true. They were true stories. So this this is an old, an old problem. So what it's about is, is a, it's, a, it's a dad who gives his nine year old a, a 22 rifle. For Christmas, doesn't give it to him, but they buys it to give to him for Christmas, wraps it up, puts it in the closet. The kid's snooping around looking for Christmas gifts, finds it, takes it, loads it. And then he and the neighbor kid go out and play with it. And they and the neighbor kid trips. The gun goes off and hits him in the heart and kills him. And so the whole moral of it is, is that it's illegal. Then they say it was illegal to at least in Los Angeles, California, to give a, 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 a kid a gun like that. And so so this is not anything new. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. This is 1949. The people were doing this, and it was illegal. You know, because uh, kids are getting hurt. <clears throat> Go ahead. So, um, sh- shifting gears, um, Kelly Rizzo, Bob Saget's widow, is being shamed all over social media because she's dating. She's dating. It's been and a couple and, of years, right? Uh, well, I believe it's been two. She so she posted a, a, a video on TikTok. Uh, explaining, look, you know, I waited 18 months. It won't be up there before long. Before I started dating. 18 months. Pardon? It won't be up there long. Oh, just, yeah, when it gets banned. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> worry about it. <laughs> but she said she waited 18 months, and it's like, you know, there's not anything wrong with the fact that she is going on with her life. So do you think that she's doing anything that's disrespectful? Because uh, well, among the shaming is that it's completely disrespectful to Bob Saget for her to be going out with other men at this point. I mean, how uh, long? How long is she supposed to? You know, she was going to is, convent. She's supposed to burn herself in. F, I mean, I think that. Well, the. I mean, not that it's she. She's entitled to do whatever she wants. The of only course she thing, is. Did people find out because they were spying on her, or was she doing a bunch of social media posting about her dates? Not a. I have no clue. But but, uh, but people know, and she's being she's being shamed for it. So what's the what is the appropriate time that you think people should wait? Uh, whatever the hell that it, they feel they like. Want. And whatever I think want. the older you get, the shorter it is. I see these things mm-hmm. like in advice columns, you know, my, my mother's only been gone six months and my 80 year old father is already dating. Well, he may only have another couple of years. How long do you want him to wait? A couple of months, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, my well, house ex- is 80, where, where's an 80 year old getting women? That's my yeah. question. Where's how's your 80 year old father? 80 year old. What, in what the nursing home, she got one 80 year old man and 20 women. He's going to be, I mean, the, the odds, the older you get, the more the, the light, you know, there are a lot more older women than older men. I mean, my ex was dating before the ink was dry on the divorce decree, and I didn't think it was too soon. Well, that's different, though. Divorce is different. But de- yeah. in terms of death, you know, what what is disrespectful? I, I remember somebody um, uh, I, I knew what I, I knew of, you know, it wasn't a friend, but an acquaintance whose uh, whose husband was killed in an accident. And she was married to another guy like within six months. And it was kind of like, you know, you do what you want, but it's still, I don't know. There's something about that. Okay. Something about that bothered me. Wasn't my business. Didn't open my mouth. Was not my business. But, it, there, you know, what What would you consider? So you consider no time to be disrespectful. Well, no, it's not about respect. It's, I mean, every situation is so different. It's like you can't make rules about it because it also depends on where the marriage was, you know, if they were, I don't know. I just feel like if you say it's got to be at least a year, you can't, I mean, it's, it just depends on the situation. I, I also feel it's less about what's respectful and more what's good for the new person. I know for me, I wasn't ready to date till a good year. And I, all I can speak of is divorce because I haven't been widowed, but I wasn't ready to date for a good year afterwards. And people were telling me after two months, I should get back out there. I wasn't ready. I'm glad I waited. So I feel like, you know, my mom moved like three months after my father died cross country it was stupid and 
I, I just, you know, like you don't want to, I, the thing I had read is you don't want to make major life decisions for a year after right. a death right. just because you're not thinking clearly. But no, again, you're clouded. Okay. Don, you well, got something to say? Look, look, look at this. Okay. So I, I've always um, thought myself evolved enough to tell a maybe if something happens to me, find your joy as soon as you can. I've said that to him. But also, I thought you didn't mean it. You know, no, no, I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> I didn't mean it, but, but, check this out. but here's a situation I was in that didn't involve actual death, but here's what happened. I said to a woman I was seeing, we were very serious. I said, I want you to know that if anything ever happens to me where I'm incapacitated, like I'm in a wheelchair and steering it with a straw, you know, go ahead and start dating, go out, get busy, have fun. If I'm incapacitated, I'm a quadriplegic, go ahead and have fun. She said, you just said that so you can get down or something. <laughs> <laughs> was she right? Yeah, was she I right? I think she was right. But the <laughs> point is, I would accept her. I would accept her going to have fun. I really would. I can't do anything for you. Please enjoy yourself. How selfish can you be? What was that case? Oh, God, years ago, like maybe 15 years ago, uh, or might even be 20, the, the, uh, uh, the woman who had been in 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 a vegetative state for like years and it, it be, she became a conservative cause celeb. Oh, yes. Uh, remember, I can't think of her name because what the deal was is that she was on a machine and, you know, she was brain dead. Right. And and uh, her husband, you know, had another woman and had kids with the other woman because it was like years. And yeah. her parents, it, it was her it was her parents who wanted to keep her alive and said right. that she was still alive in there. And he wanted to pull the plug. And and so they were like at, at war in the courts over this. Right. And they were sharing. Shiva. 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 Yeah. And her husband had had moved on. Her husband had had moved on. Well, with he another also woman into the family. And didn't she also she didn't have it written, but she, at least he claimed she had told him, don't ever keep me in this. Just I'm a vegetable state. Mm -hmm. Like it was her wish not to be kept alive. Yeah, that was exactly. And, and her parents just, you know, fought and fought and fought and fought and fought. And the way it ended up was they did pull the plug and there was an autopsy and it, the autopsy was done. Yeah, she had been dead the whole time. Yeah. She really was. She was breathing. But but uh, I guess her heart was beating, had to have been. Uh, but but she was she was clinically dead. So uh, but there were people who were really shaming this husband. You know, saying that, you know, your wife's still alive and here you are with another woman and a whole other family with another woman and the whole thing. It's like, you know, come on. At what point do you say? I think the key is don't go out dancing because that shows right. too much joy. <laughs> and right? don't post it on TikTok. <laughs> exactly. You can't be out in the club when my wife's in the hospital. You can't do that. Well, it depends on how aware the person is. I mean, Don, if you were in a wheelchair but had all your mental faculties and you saw the woman you were seeing out partying and you were fully capable of seeing it and talking to her about it, I don't know if that would be a little different. Oh, no, yeah. no, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I, I'm 100% sure of, of having, in, in the real sense, incapable of bringing that kind of physical joy to your partner, how would you, why would you want to hold that back and say, I'm upset, I'm sad, stick with me, I can't do anything for you. That's, he, that's not an evolved person. See, that's why I love Christopher Reeve's wife, Christopher Reeve's wife, uh, Dana, because, you know, when he was paralyzed from the neck down, she was 100% there. And she was talking about them even having more children. They had a young son when he yeah, got hurt. Quadriplegics are not necessarily completely un incapable of providing pleasure. And I don't yeah, know. There's, there's a, uh, well, she'd said that there was, I guess that he, how did she put it? That he had some kind, he would periodically have some kind of a, a reflexes or something is how she put it. She, yeah. She, you know, she's real vague about it, but, but yeah. she didn't go and run off. You know, she didn't go and run off with somebody, and you know. frankly, I'm not going out dancing with my husband all that often. Most of the joy that we have is just talking to each other. And he could do that if he was in a wheelchair. Yeah, so that's I boring. Wouldn't... <laughs> what, talking? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say, I didn't so say all. I so said your marriage most. has deteriorated to that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in my 60s. So let's just say, you know, I mean, yeah, I talking is. What, you are? I'm 64, yeah. I'm 65. I'm I'm the, the elder stateswoman here. Hey, you guys, I, what was Vietnam? 1968. What what, I, what was what was it? About? I have to I have to explain. My husband is oh, yeah, young. Oh, you're young. Okay. My Act husband like. is your age, Brian. I think he's Act 50. Like. 
he's 58 and he he doesn't remember Watergate. So I had to explain what Watergate was. Well, I remember Watergate. And I've yeah. seen enough, you know, I've yeah. seen enough stuff about Watergate. I, after the fact, yeah. I also, my joke with him yeah. is I had to tell him that actually Paul McCartney was in a band that was pretty good before yeah. Wings. Because he yeah. actually did, he learned Paul McCartney from Wings. Because I just found out, by the way, you know, I'm doing the, um, I have a part in the new Spinal Tap movie. I know. And, I saw uh, that. Wait, on, wait, 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 wait. Well, hold on. What? So, well, yeah, yeah, somebody I, wanted I, I to know. You, no, no, no. I, hold on. Brian, I, Brian. I, I, got, I got a part in the new, in the new Spinal Tap you, You're not the drummer, are you? No, 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 no. Okay, and I, I don't shoot. I, I shoot in a couple of weeks, uh, and uh, I but I just they just uh, announced uh, all the cameos they got, and so McCartney's going to be in it. McCartney's in it. What are you talking John, about? Hold on, let's focus here. You're going to be in the next Final Tap movie for real. Yeah, you didn't yeah. see it on on Facebook or Twitter yeah, or something like that. I I I'm, I'm working on another project with Rob Reiner, and he uh, he auditioned me for. What are you uh, playing? Part. I can't say. Oh I'm, not allowed to say. I'm serious. I'm not, I'm, so I'm not allowed to say. That they started so shooting. Cool. They started shooting last week in New Orleans, and uh, and I go in a couple of weeks uh, to to do my part. I'm there for just a couple of days to do. When my does part. it come Let's out? Say, the, just got elevated I in my world. Yeah, by nine miles. You well, can the, take advantage of anything you need in my life. That is <laughs> for being a, legendary. It's, uh, it's, it's it's very very cool because um the way that it works and because the audition was mostly ad lib because the the whole movie's ad lib but that's how they right. did the first one right. what they do is they they write out a story it's like uh, Rob Reiner and 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 uh, Christopher Guest and I say I think all the guys uh, I think Harry Shearer and Michael McKeon also <laughs> contribute and they come up with a story and it's scene by scene is a paragraph here's what happens in the scene same way they do Curb Your Enthusiasm. Right. Here's what happens in the scene. And then it's all ad lib. As long as you end up, you know, want you to end up at a certain place. And so that's, you know, that's how I auditioned. And that's what my scene was. And they liked my audition and, and I got it. But what's that's cool, crazy. Yeah. I was reading in variety though. Who else is in it? McCartney's in it. Elton John is in it. Um, Garth Brooks is in it. Trisha Yearwood. Uh, there are a couple of others. Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr is in it too, as a matter of fact. So uh, no, not with me. I, they're not in the scene I'm doing. Oh, darn. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask. No, if there's anybody no, the, good scene, in your scene. the scene that I'm in, it's just me and the band. Is, is the it scene. doesn't matter. And that's why I had an audition with that. Was, but it's with them. Really, that's... It, it was intimidating as hell because the audition was, it was, it was Rob Reiner, uh, Harry Shearer, Christopher Guest, and Michael McKeon, the band. And we did it over, over YouTube. And, I'm sorry, over Zoom. Dude. Excuse me. We did it over Zoom. Ooh. And uh, and we just, you know, uh, Rob threw out what the situation was and said, okay, talk. And so we just talked and we <laughs> back and forth. And I did a character that I came up with uh, beforehand and uh, they were laughing and uh, and I got it. So that's, I know this that's is, how we're, we're on Zoom, but I feel like I want to reach out through the screen and just breathe the air you breathe. So, I mean, that's just like, that's yeah, it's pretty cool. The, okay, cool but here's, is an understatement. Here's, here's the thing I'm putting in perspective, though. Uh, I have read that the, the original Spinal Tap I had to rewatch too before I auditioned. I watched it twice the night before, yeah. twice the night before. And it's like an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 40 minutes. And then I read that they shot 100 hours of footage. They had 100 hours of footage and they edited it down to an hour and a half movie. So whether or not I actually end up being in it is another story. I'm in it, but <laughs> I mean, if you shoot 100 hours, that's a lot of stuff that got cut. There's a lot of stuff that didn't get used. If, there, if there's 100 hours of footage shot and the movie itself is an hour and a half. Okay, but here's the thing. On story, on story is the moment that you audition with about a transitional moment that can get yanked out. Because if you've got the whole band and you're playing a manager type person or what? I can't say. Oh, you couldn't tell me. Okay, I that's right. I can't tell you anything about it. Okay. You know. If it's a pivotal transition moment, you're going to need it on story. Right. Well, um, I don't know if it's a pivotal transitional moment or not, but if it works out well, it'll be funny. I don't, I don't, well, I'm just saying, I don't you, know. No, no, no and, hints. And you know, with that hundred hours, I wonder how much of the 98 and a half hours that got cut were other variations on scenes or were they entire scenes and characters that didn't end up? Well, I can guarantee. I, mean? I, can, I can guarantee. Well, I was in the bucket list and, and in the bucket list, um, we had a couple of, I, I played Morgan Freeman's younger son. He had two sons and a daughter in that movie. 
And uh, I, I played the younger son and we had a couple of family scenes where we're upset that, that, that he's running off with Jack Nichols. He's dying and running off with Jack Nicholson around right. the world, leaving his family. <laughs> and so we had a couple of family scenes and I had dialogue. We all had dialogue. And uh, when, when uh, they were editing and they tightened everything up, all our dialogue was cut. All our dialogue was cut. I'm in, I'm in three shots. I'm in a picture that he, that, uh, that uh, Morgan shows to Nicholson in the hospital. I'm at a dinner table scene and I'm at a scene in the hospital when he dies. And, not I, and, I, and I hug my mother, you know, I hug my mother, but no, I don't say it. So, you know, we'll see. Bottom line yeah. is I'm just going to have fun. I'm just going to go. Well, in. I'm gonna have fun. You, but you get to be there with them and Adla and those guys are so tight with each other. Just mm -hmm. so well, that's, that's why it was so scary. That's why it was scary as hell, because I was reading that they had been improv together since like 1966. Right. You know, right. And then here I come. <laughs> You know, on radio, on stage, on film. They've been doing this since 1966 together. And here I am, you know, so <laughs> anyway, so that's it. Anyway, enough enough about me. Speaking of which, by the way, I was I didn't know that you you have a Wikipedia entry, Don. I was have you seen your Wikipedia? Yes, I have. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know. I was just wow. last night. I was I looking know, and I, I I've got one too. I didn't know I was on his day. Don't look at me anybody. Bottom line is apparently anybody can get one. <laughs> Don's got one. I got one. Uh, I but, don't. <laughs> okay, almost anybody. Almost but it, anybody. But there's stuff about you in it. If it's accurate, I didn't know. Were you, were you on a different world? I was told uh, on a date that I had one by a woman. I didn't know I had one. But she was like, you know, you got a Wikipedia. I said, oh, I do. Is that going to help me out here? <laughs> so, oh, so she like checked you out online before you went out? I guess so. I never thought about that. Hey, man, what you talking about? Did it help, though? Yeah, it absolutely helped. <laughs> <laughs> so, let, so were you? Let, let me say this voice. Let me say that. Oh, yeah, it definitely helps. I'll say it in that <laughs> very white voice. But then do you also have to say in your same very white voice, just like Brian, I can't tell you any more about it. Well, there you go. I can't That's tell you nothing else about it, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll just have to go to YouTube and pull up old episodes of A Different World and look for you. <laughs> and look and look for you. Look for um, and Charles. So is it is it accurate? Is yours accurate? Uh, no, because they keep saying I was nominated for two Emmy Awards and I wasn't. And yeah. a lot of people pull that out of that. They say you nominated for two Emmy Awards. I've been to places and they'll say in the promo, uh, Emmy nominee is too late. I don't want to go. Listen, you need to change the promo. So not that. And I also had to do some interesting things of editing it because at one point it was really playing up uh, my relationship with Cosby and that dynamic <laughs> shifted. So I said, how about a little less Cosby and a little more Reed? <laughs> you know, what's funny is I, I took him off all of my stuff. I, I was his opening act in the Bay Area for years. Right. You know, um, when he'd come to town like two or three times a year, he'd do my radio show and, and uh, I would come, I would introduce him you know, at, uh, at venues. And I know that that stuff's off my resume. That's completely off of, off of my resume. Hey, get that out of there. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I'll tell you the one that's fun is, um, is, uh, IMDB. You yes. know, you look up at IMDB and trivia about the people and they don't vet that at all. And so I wanted to see if they were going to vet it. So I put some, so on mine, if you go to my IMDB page, it says that I, before um, I became a comic, um, I was a youth boxer and I killed a man in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> you put that on there. Are you serious? It's, yes. Go no, look. It's so bad. So <laughs> Brian, what I wanted to have is <laughs> my record, my record is there, my knockouts are there, and then I killed a man in the ring. <laughs> so how does that work? How does that how does that work for you on first dates? Uh as long as we're out of the <laughs> ring, it's fine. <laughs> We don't go to. Oh, are you serious? This is crazy. Yeah, go look because they'll put. Yeah, anybody can put anything on there. Anybody can put absolutely anything oh, on hilarious. there. Speaking of boxing, I, I was listening to a, a local sports talk station, and they were um, talking about how when we were kids, remember how we always knew who the heavyweight champion of the world was. We always yeah. knew it was Ali or George Foreman or, or Leon Joe Spinks Frazier. or Frazier or whoever. We always knew. Okay, who's who's champion right now? You're not asking me, are you? I'm asking I, both know, of you. I know nothing about sports. And when I was a kid, but, I didn't know who it was. So I certainly don't know who it is now. You got to be kidding. 
you didn't know when Ali, you know, and you didn't have to know anything about sports to know who, who was the heavyweight. It's like knowing who the president was. You know, right. who the, who the I was I was a nerdy Jewish girl, and I could have told there you only, who the first violinist of the New York Philharmonic was. <laughs> so there were only four right. channels and ABC Sports had the boxing matches. So there's everybody. I wasn't allowed to watch TV as a kid. My parents were super, super strict. So but, yeah. but now nobody Donna's giving me this look like who <laughs> is she? <laughs> yeah, but I agree with you. No, people knew when they and I mean, I might not have known he was the heavyweight championship title person, but I knew the name but yeah, yeah I you know, know the name. well now, now i can't tell you i have no idea no clue and that was the, that was the, the the whole point is like how, how it's it's a sport that's dying um it's a sport that really doesn't have a lot of as, as much public interest as it did i mean because it was a huge thing to be i guess what part of it is is that it was i guess there are three three belts is that right w w uh I, I, yeah. wbc the, wbc yeah, and there's yeah, a third one. And the WBF, World Boxing Federation. And okay. plus, aren't there all the other weird ones too? Like there's other kinds of, you know, mixed martial art kind of like that's yeah, diluted a lot. No, there's those are lot. those are those are totally different. But, right, I know, but I'm saying just the interest in that any kind of fighting oh, sport well, seems to be diluted too. Yeah, MF, was it there's MMA? been a boom in those areas. A yeah. big boom in uh, mixed martial arts. UFC right. is massive, yeah. You know, yeah. where you can kick, kick the guy as well as punch him and, and bite him, him and hit him with yeah. a chair. And all. Yeah. I can't believe people still watch wrestling. I don't know, right? People know it's and, fake and they still watch wrestling. It's always been fake. Yeah. You know, well, it's performance. It's performance art. Yeah. It's it's theater. It's interpretive dance at this it's, point. It's theater. <laughs> yeah. So so the Rock you, pardon? The Rock just became a major owner in the WWF. And it's really just, and the numbers just skyrocketed. He's showing up as the rock just to say, Welcome. He's not even fighting. Wow. And it's like the numbers are going through the roof. Well, I'll tell you, um, when I was a kid, I used to watch his father, Rocky Johnson. His his father was my favorite wrestler when I when I was growing up. Yeah. You know, I used to watch and I thought it was real. You know, I was a kid. I didn't know. I thought I, you know, I thought it was real. You know, I thought that, I didn't know that it was blood packs. It was that it was real blood. That, you know, I thought it was real blood coming out of their uh, coming out of their wow, mouths. If they got the speaking of, of speaking of, of of wrestling, um, Robert Kennedy Jr. is talking about making Jesse Ventura his running mate. I thought it was going to be Aaron Rodgers. That's what I saw. One of, it's one of the two, Aaron Rodgers or Jesse Ventura, because he was such a good governor. A minute, I, <laughs> And a paragon of intelligent governance. I mean, that's just not. I mean, the whole thing with Kennedy is just nuts. It's like you don't have a chance. You're not going to win. All you're going to do is elect Trump. That's all you're going to do. Well, it's actually, they're saying he may pull more votes from Trump than Biden. So who knows? He's Why? Because the anti-vax? Because he's a big anti-vaxxer? Because the anti-vax stuff and because his whole family has disavowed him. So. Yeah. Okay. So do you guys know? How long has it been since an independent has won the presidency? An independent has never won the presidency. Never. George Washington was an independent. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. All right. No, was he part? Wasn't he part of the, what was it? The Federalist Party? I don't I know. The they, even, they didn't really have it, but they even established at that point. I think by there John was Wigs and Wigs and Federalists and yes. they, they established that he was the first independent. In terms of the the parties that were right. in place, affiliation, right? He was an he, independent. He was an independent. Well, and independent no one can't win now because so you stay with your tribe. Then, they've been screwing up the flow. You yeah. you, you stay with your tribe. That, you know that, and that, right. that's why it's going to be interesting to see what happens. It's going to be interesting to see how this shakes out. Um, we'll end it with this, and I'll I'll just ask you for a quick prediction. If you were going to predict today, who's going to win? If you had to predict Bye. today, you think so? I, yeah, Bye. I think I not wishful with, thinking, not wishful thinking, not wishful thinking, because I honestly think between the cases and the financial problems and the stress of it, I I think that that's going to pull Trump down. I really do. Or he'll have a stroke or something. He's already looking like there's some advanced dementia, for, pretty honestly. And um, and well, yeah, but they're saying the same thing about I mean, but on the right, they say the same thing about Biden. They're, 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 
He's an old man who occasionally stumbles over his word and is a lifelong stutter. That's very different than somebody who can't tell the difference between Nikki Haley and Nancy Pelosi regularly and can't complete a sentence. Or but also his wife's name. Or, or think that she's that Jean Carroll is Marla Maples. But I, but also like the it. cases. Look at I all like the cases. It. I'm sorry, Don. No, no, no. I like that your view of why he won't win is different from mine, which adds more chips. Uh, and that is um, Kylie Jenner, Lil Baby, Tyler Swift. Uh, Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. Taylor Swift. See, Swift. you just did that. You just did what, what Trump does. <laughs> <laughs> you just did what Trump does. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler Swift. <laughs> the other reason. I know her very well. I know her very well. The um, other thing that makes me confident besides the, the, I agree, the celebrities is I have family members who are Trumpers and they are really sad because they're convinced that he won't win. That's pretty encouraging if they're in the cult and they don't think he'll win. Well, we'll again, we'll, we'll see. You know, we'll, we'll see. His diehards. Well, here's the thing. Here's what the big fact, the, the, the big, um, the, one of the most important factors anyway, and that is that even the polls that have him ahead they, they, they then ask people if he's convicted of a felony before the election, will you still vote for him? And it, it's a, it's a small to moderate percentage of those voters say, no, they won't because then, then he's unfit. Then he's unfit. Right. If, if he's, if he's convicted. And so it so everybody's watching, going to be watching this trial in Manhattan, the hush money trial, Stormy Daniels trial to find out, you know, what, see what's going on and what, what happens because if he is in fact convicted, it, it's not, you know, most people won't even go to jail for something like that. From what I understand, they'll get some kind of, you know, probation, have to pay a fine, restitution, and a bunch of other things, like pro prohibition for doing some kind of business or something like that. No, you know, most people don't go to jail for what he's, what he's charged with. But if he's convicted of it, uh, you know, there are, they say that's the best chance that he's, he's not going to, to win. If in fact that, that does, if in fact that does happen and Rolling Stones got an interesting piece today uh, about how his lawyers are begging him to keep his mouth shut when, when, for this trial, they're begging him not to act like he acted in the, the, <laughs> trial for fraud and where he's sitting there, you know, as people testify, he's like throwing out comments and they, they'll say stuff to the right. jury and then and then comes out and has a press conference and and, and bad mouths the judge and bad mouths the the, uh, the attorney general of uh, that. The attorney general. Yeah, she's the attorney general. Tish James. Yeah. Um, and uh, so they're saying, please, you know, this it's not going to help you. He's not going to help you. OK, uh, last question. Last question. Last question. Trump to keep his mouth shut. That's I was going to say last question. Bet. Bet. Do, do you think he does? Do you Are think you kidding? He, he, cannot, he just went out and defamed E. Jean Carroll again after they it went up from what? A few million to 83 million. And the 91. Said, By the 91. time it's all done, it's 91. It's 91 million. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. but it, he'll do it again. And the, the, the judge even said the reason the fine was so high was because we've got to use it as deterrent. And if he does it again, it will go up. He can't oh, keep really? shut. Okay, so has he defamed again? Yes, yes, yes. Million? Yes, last weekend again, he called her. He claims it's a made-up story. Yeah, he he didn't mention her by name. But he, he didn't says, know her. He said he had to post a ninety-one million dollar bond because some woman he didn't even know was making up stories and and. Uh, so, so it's going to go up then, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it depends if she sues again. Yeah. And legal analysts are saying, yeah, she can sue again. Oh, oh, He's oh, defender oh, again. Oh, her attorney, her attorney wants that game. Oh, yeah. Her attorney. Oh, got, yeah. They said um, there was a, I think with the Atlantic wrote that this is a key person that the left should use because for some reason she really gets under Trump's skin. Yep. The attorney for, for Carol. Roberta Kaplan. And yeah. See, that's why they're scared about what's going to happen and what he's going to say in this this New York criminal trial, because, you know, if people he perceives as his enemies or who are his enemies, like Michael Cohen, uh, you know, and Stormy Daniels, when they're on the stand, he's not going to be able to keep his mouth shut. No. He's going to make comments. He's going to say something. You know, or he'll go on and stand in front of the camera and a microphone and he'll say that they're liars or badmouth them. And, you know, he is, I wouldn't touch her. She's not my type and all of this kind of stuff, you know, so maybe they'll be able to, to, to go after him for defamation. So yeah. but I don't know. I'm with you. I don't think he I don't think he has self-control. I do yeah. not think he has self-control. You know, he may try for, you know, a couple hours. He's incorrigible on the first day. You yeah, know, right. uh, we're out of time. Don, where are you playing? 
Oh boy. Um, next Tuesday night, um, Don Reed speak easy comedy night at, um, the max in Fairfax. We'll have Mark Curry who's on tour with Cat Williams and, uh, Diane Amos, the, uh, oh, awesome. yeah, yeah the uh, we'll be there next Tuesday, uh, Redwood nights on the 28th, uh, storytelling under the stars in Fairfax. You got to do that show. Um, and it's then Fairfax, California, by the way, we got listeners around the world, actually. Exactly. Hey, exactly. Um, the one in Fairfax, California, and then um, Never Too Late show coming in <laughs> April to Deer Park uh, Valley Theater Nights. Um, I'll be doing that show. That's part of the Johnny Carson Estate and Production Company that I have a partnership with to tell this story about the importance of never giving up. And it tracks my entertainment career. But that's, that's a wonderful, cool. wonderful show. And And Lauren? Well, now that Don has inspired me to never give up, I'm going to start working on my Wikipedia page. <laughs> I'll be at the Marsh on uh, Monday the 18th as part of the Monday Night Marsh stream. Are you doing Monday Night Marsh when? Yeah, th uh, this coming Monday. Monday, March 18th. Okay, good. I'm, the third of, I'm the third of three performers. Um, it's a very mixed bag. This is the second round of the same group, but I'm doing Don't Mind Me, I'll Just Sit Here in the Dark, my show about the Jewish mother stereotype, and this version is Why Non-Jews might also be interested in it. And then the next day, I'll be doing the show at the Rhoda Goldman Plaza Home for Jewish Seniors and um, putting up my uh, YouTube videos every week on Psycho Supermom is my YouTube channel. And this week, I'm doing one about how they keep lowering the bar for what the Republicans will put up with. And then in May, I'll be going to Denver for a fundraiser for Moms Demand Gun, Moms Demand Gun Sense. Um, and starting to do some political fundraisers. So if anybody's doing any kind of fundraiser for a nice liberal cause, I'm there and I probably have a song about it. <clears throat> All right. And I got a couple of things coming up. Uh, it, it is the 20th anniversary of my very first solo show, Not a Genuine Black Man, the longest running solo show in San Francisco theater history. And uh, I'm, I'm doing a run at uh, actually a number of places over the course of the next month for the anniversary and the 1000th performance of uh, wow. that show. I've been a thousand shows. So uh, oh, wow. this, yeah. this Saturday, I will be in Alameda, California at the Altarina Playhouse with it. Uh, on Sunday, I'll be at the Marsh in Berkeley, California, uh, doing uh, my show on depression, the waiting period. I do it a couple of uh, times a month, free to the public uh, as a suicide prevention tool. So uh, if you, if you deal with depression, you know, somebody who does come on out, uh, I'll be in, uh, I'm sorry, I'll be at the Marsh San Francisco with that this week, next week, next Sunday, week from this Sunday, I'll be at the Marsh Berkeley with it. And both performances are free to the public. So come on out for that one. Uh, then a week from, uh, a week from this Saturday, I will be uh, at uh, Marin Shakes, Marin Shakespeare Company uh, with Not a Genuine Black Man. And then we'll be running in, on Saturdays at the Marsh San Francisco through May. Uh, so, Great. so come on out. If you want more information, uh, you can go to briancopeland.com. It's got all the places where I'm going to be. I also want to throw a quick plug. Yeah. Yeah. DMV, your best of San Francisco solo series. I'm doing a DMV. I play nine characters waiting in line at the Department of Motor Vehicles at the Samuel, Samuel and Joe Library. End That's of right. March. End of March. 30th through your series. Yes. 30th and 31st. Uh, also want to mention throw out as a quick plug. Um, I wrote my first crime novel during the, uh, during the shutdown and uh, it is being published uh, and it'll be available nationwide on April 23rd. It's going to, I looked, you can pre-order it for uh, at Amazon, of course, and you can pre-order it uh, at Walmart's going to have it. Target's going to have it. So it's going to be in all these places. So if you want to pre-order, please do, you know, there's a link, go to briancopeland.com. There's a link to click to, uh, to, uh, to pick it up. It's called outraged. It's a uh, it's it's a crime thriller. that's going to be a series. Uh, I've already written the second book, and the second book wow. will cut. Book two comes out a uh, a year from uh, from April. So the first book comes out next next uh, next month, and then the second book comes out in April of 2025. And that was called Shadow right. of Justice. Yeah, so Congratulations! I got two. I got that's two. Right. Thank you, uh, Lauren Beer, Don Reed. Thank you both very much. It's always a pleasure to have you. Thanks Thank so much. Me. All right. That's going to do it for us. I will check you out next week unless I catch another one of these hundred viruses. <laughs> Until then, be kind to your neighbor. He knows where you live.